rocks. Miles has flown out from Oregon for us to do a tasting of his brand Westward. So we're just going to head downstairs in a minute. Go have a couple of cheeky gems. Jesus Christ. Keep going. Keep going. What's up guys, Jez here from Whisker Fight and welcome to episode 125 of Whisker Fight TV. Alright, we're done. Now, we've capped it out at one of my favourite spots. Um, I've kind of hyped it up for the last two, three weeks and I've just been like, look, this is happening, this is what we're doing, but now we've kind of gotten to that sweet spot where it's like, we are at cast strength land. Now, a did this very early on when I started hitting 100 proof and it was just like, we are at a, sorry, when I hit episode 100 and then I started hitting it at 100 proof and then it kind of just went up from there and I tried to match as many as I could. Now we are at 125, that sweet, sweet spot for barrel entry proof, maxed out for bourbon at least. But we are not doing a bourbon this week. We are doing something a little bit different, not typically something I go for, but we are in the land of American whiskey, so let us make it happen. The land of American whiskey? That's not right. We're in Australia, but in Jez's Whiskify House of Love, we are, I guess, American whiskey land. So let's get it going. Okay, so let me grab today's bottle. This is Westward American Single Malt Whiskey. Bring that in there for you guys to see. Now, let me grab a glass. And let us pop this box. So, I really hope that looked impressive. <laughs> It, when I got this months ago, it came in this fancy box and I was like, yeah, boy, now we uh, we kicking it. So, fancy box for this Westward American Single Malt Cask Strength. So, obviously, 125 at 125. Now, let me roll the footage. Let's hope it's not there because um, if not, I'm going to be standing there like a... Or something and um, yeah, it's just we're having a good time. Okay, so Westward American single malt cast strength proofed at 125 or 62.5% ABV. Now, pop this cork, non age stated, uh, cast is new chard, American oak. Let me just kind of get in there, long pour. We were five. I, I don't want to check the carpet. Hopefully, I'll do this. Um, and uh, it is a hundred percent malted barley. So not typically something I go for, but once again, we're mixing it up. This is the day. So, one hundred and seventy bucks at Cambridge Cellars at the moment. Uh, it's RIP in Australia is two hundred bucks. And in the US, it is $99.95 from Westward. So, if I have influenced anyone so far to get one, Cambridge Sellers currently has them at a $30 discount. It's always good starting there. So, let me kick off these little, uh, I'll, I'll call it uh, expressions, notes. Just to kind of walk you guys through, and then we will get into the tasting. So... Started off, welcome to Westwood. Obviously, I haven't really spoken about Westwood much because it is a single malt American whiskey, but being able to sit down with Miles and talk shit with him, it's really one of those things that I kind of wanted to lean into, especially this year, and kind of, uh, I guess, expand on everything I know. So, this is this whiskey distillery that operates out of Oregon. Now, if you don't know where Oregon is, it's basically up top left-hand side of the US. I could drop a map here. I might drop a map here, actually. Put a map right here. And it's up the top left-hand side. Now, that uh, the distillery in Oregon, that is Westwood 
obviously. They sold spirits like the brand that you guys should be familiar with that uh, Ryan Reynolds is kind of like championing, championing, jeez, is Aviation Gin. I know, it's crazy, before they sold it in 2018. But they were producing that stuff just to keep the lights on whilst that whiskey aged. Now, before I kind of get into this juice, they uh, they start with a beer yeast strain. So it's one of those things where like nosing it and tasting it, you kind of see those, those beer notes. So it's interesting to kind of see them execute on that. But also majority of distillers create these beer distillers mash as well. When they're making whiskey, it's basically beer before they distill it turn it into alcohol and barrel it, bottle it. Now, they make it out of 100% malted barley, as I said, distill it out, drop it into that barrel entry proof at 125, cast straight, get it. Before aging the juice in virgin new chart American oak casks, uh, until the master distiller decides that these are ready to be bottled. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with this Westwood cast strength, it's basically a cast strength version of their core range that they have on offer. It's typically only three, I don't wanna get this wrong, but I think it's three standard offerings plus the cast strength bringing this up to four. Now, let us get into the tasting and uh, see if I can hook you guys in. I, I don't work for these guys at all, Westwood. The amount I talk about it, and I've, I've got a cheeky little Westwood pin here I flogged that I'm uh, super happy about. So um, I took that from the guy that was running the standard, the whiskey show. So doesn't hurt to uh, steal a little bit of free stuff. So oh, I love the color on that too. It's just dark. Look at dark. Dark is good. So, nosing that, you see, it's fun. I'm getting that uh, typical beer note. Straight off the bat, just like, it's one of those things, you're just like, okay, cool. I know that's beer. Just putting your nose in that glass and going, it's like an empty beer glass. That is what I'm nosing at this point now. Maybe some oak there as well, like a little bit of light oak. It's not not much, but it's r reminding me of bourbon as well. So, what the? Okay, something funky on the inside of my glass. What the hell? What is that? I hope that's cookie. I don't know what that is. I don't think that was in there before. Some weird stuff happening on the inside of my glass. I'm gonna. Okay, we are. We are switching it up. We are. We can't use that glass. I don't know what the hell went on with that. There's nothing in the bottle. I'm really not sure. Oh, we'll uh, we'll keep it rolling because we are we are at we are at eight minutes. So is there kind of like an almond note to it as well? So what I say, almond, oak, like a little bit of beer. It doesn't actually open up as nicely as what it would in uh, my Whiskify glass there either. So. I wonder what happened to that glass uh, for the taste. Okay. So, 
thick viscosity, always a winner. It's kind of just like, as I gave that, my typical Kentucky chew, flicked around on that palate, it's mainly living at the back of that, back of the tongue there, with a heap of that, let's say heat to it. So you definitely feel it on the back of the palate there, and it's just kind of lighting everything up from there forward. As I let this kind of sit on my palate earlier, I was able to pull this funky little caramel note out of it, but I obviously wasn't able to get it because of the speed I need to produce this. So, there you guys go. Now, for the finish. So, for that finish here, this is, I say, long finish of this, like, toasted maltiness that resembles a, uh, kind of like a pale ale, which is like, a, a little funky, if you ask me. Uh, I I like it. It's I guess it's it reminds me of a beer. Like it's it's liquid beer in a glass. But beers are all liquid. Here we go. Here's the barbecue sauce note again. If you know, you know. Uh, for and I'll just I'll go again because I was gonna say for the finish again, but I'll I'll finish again. Always finish. Kind of, it gives me a little bit of a flashback too because it reminds me of when I'm a kid. I was a kid. I still am a kid. I'm still 12. And mum had these like water crisp cracker things in the cupboard. And it's like that with a little bit of black pepper on it. That is that kind of note I'm getting there as well. And just like, yeah. So a little bit of like a flashback into my childhood there. It's like, that's a little funky. I, I dig that though. I like that. Uh, but I think I've covered all my clover notes. Oh, I did miss a like a lingering chocolate there as well. But I obviously didn't get it this time around. I will leave it in there though because it was part of that. Still got like this good cast strength hug right here too. So it's like super toasty. Now, let us get into my buy bar or pass. Now, it's an easy way to break down whether I'm gonna buy bar or pass on a bottle, obviously. Buy is pick up one. Bar, you know, I'm like, ah, it's not for my palate. Now, start off, uh, the nose is somewhat basic, but feels clean. So what I mean is I didn't find too much going on there. I kind of had to work for the flavors a little bit. So like uh, having to put in work, I'm like, ugh. But it's always fun. Now, the cleanness is more referring to like that pale ale kind of note where it's just like I can understand that that is like this is a beer. It's very clean, crisp, super dry. Now, uh, second note is the 170 is a sweet spot for this drop and I've seen it as high as 220. So essentially, I'd be happy to pay... 170 bucks all day for this. Uh, just because, well, A, it's seven, is it, we got seven hundies or seven fifties? 700 mils at cast strength. Uh, it's probably good value, especially, and then if people are looking for like single malts that are high, excuse me, um, high proof and everything else, it's kind of up there but you're not going into your kind of like scotch category where it's like finished casks, but because you won't see many scotches around that proof point anyway. Thirdly, uh, finish has layers of flavor and then it kind of tapers out with that warm hug right there. I'm like, mm. reminds me of Bourbon Land, so 
makes me a happy boy. And fourthly, I don't ever do a fourth one, but I think today kind of deserved a fourth one. It is perfect for my frothy, loving homies. I know, like, uh, Mitch from Get Beard, he would really like this drop. It'd probably be a bit too hot for him, but it's kind of like one of those things where it's just like, I think he would really enjoy this. Like, just frothy. But yeah, and also the homies that love a delicious pale ale. So I'm kind of going to leave it there. And if you guys didn't guess, I'm going to knock this out at a buy. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm all day. 170 bucks. If you can pick it up for 170 bucks, I'm like, yeah, that's, I'm done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my tasting notes too, because I feel like it's pretty basic as you can get, and it's kind of approachable as well, and that's the idea. Um, it's nothing complex. It's all just basic, delicious juice. So thank you guys. Love y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed this Whiskey Wednesday, because I enjoy drinking it and filming it as much as you guys probably enjoy watching me do it. So who knows? Thank you. Love y'all. Stay thirsty. I'm Jez. Here is a little bit of bonus content for you guys. There's the glass. There is the gunk on the side. I don't know what the hell that is. It's putrid. Well, no good. Love y'all.